Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Herd Fit Podcast with Dr. Sam Marie and myself, Coach David Syverson. This podcast is aimed at helping anyone and everyone looking to enhance their healthy lifestyle through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset. All right, welcome back to the Herd Fit Podcast. I'm Coach David Syverson here with my co-host, Dr. and Coach Sam Marie. We are we are off to a great start this morning. <laughs> Um, we, I was about to say, sorry about the week off that we had to take. I, I heard Karen ripping you a new one yesterday for not having a podcast to listen to during her run yesterday. So sorry to Karen and sorry to all of our loyal listeners. Um, just very busy time for us. And there are occasionally Sundays where we just can't get together. So that's that we will do our best to keep you on this weekly flow that we've had for almost two years now. Um, so today's topic. Okay. I want to get into it eventually. Um, I'm going to kind of give a little intro to why and where this discussion came from, but it is going to center around RX and scaled. Should it even exist for CrossFit workouts? We'll give both sides of the argument. And where this came from was last Friday, um, Chris and I both went to an affiliate owner meetup, they call them, at Gorilla Fitness and Paramus, CrossFit Paramus. I okay. think it's the official LLC or the official uh, CrossFit um, label that they have. Mm -hmm. um, awesome gym, nice people. And we had about 20, I want to say 20, 25 affiliate owners. Uh, some were from two hours away. It really? wasn't just like a Bergen County thing. Okay. Some gyms from the city, some from Connecticut, I think it was, Long Island. So it was really cool. And I would love to go to more of those. Um, I was telling Danielle, she's the, the Northeast affiliate rep. Um, I think her official title is. Um, awesome girl. She was here at the announcement. Mm -hmm. Very... Uh, takes the initiative on a lot of things, tries to bring people together and get the message of the new leadership and cross, CrossFit out to what we should be doing, what we should expect, and all the support they want to give us. Um, so really good job by her by organizing that. It was a great time. And the topic of that day was led by David Osorio, who's the owner of, of CrossFit South Brooklyn. And it is, I think, a 13 or 14-year-old affiliate and is probably the biggest gym on the east coast yeah i someone had said that when i took my l2 that yeah. that was probably one of the biggest ones i mean he gave us affiliate owners i won't say it on the podcast some of his revenue numbers membership numbers at his peak which was a couple of years ago maybe pre-covid um and it's just like mind-boggling some of the numbers i'm like holy cow i thought we were doing well i mm -hmm. guess we're not, <laughs> we still have a ways to go mm -hmm. uh so it was that he he kind of led this talk he talked for about 45 minutes and his topic was how to run a good class Mm. From a coaching perspective. Now, he's talking to a group of owners that some of them coach more than others. Some of them don't coach at all, They, but they are in charge of the coaches. Okay. So it wasn't just, hey, owners, this is how you should run your class. It was more about, hey, owners, this is how you got to get your coaches to run a good class. And if you remember, Sam, one of our last meetings as a staff here at Bison, I think it was in the winter, uh, we were talking about the athlete experience. How do we run a good class, right? We've talked about that multiple times. Yeah warm-ups, whiteboard talks, music, like all that stuff. And all these things came up and, you know, someone says to me, why would you go to that? You've been coaching for so long, you know how to do this. And it's the same answer I gave after the announcement. It's like, where do you guys go from here? It's like, you just make it better. So as a coach, I always feel like if you're not trying to make your classes better, like I, there are several things I could do better. There's several things you could do better. You should always be trying to make your classes better or make yourself better as a coach. And if you ever get to the point where you're not, you're probably just not a good coach or you've almost kind of checked out a little bit. Yep. Right. I mean, don't you like you can self critique a class. I just took with your back squat class. You could probably self critique a couple of things. Absolutely. That you did in five and six a.m. Like yeah. if you ever get to the point where you don't think like that, it's a problem. So I go to a meeting like this, A, to, you know, network with other affiliate owners, but also to learn and just listen. What does he do? Something's he's doing some things right, obviously. So you know, we got into music talk, which was fun. <laughs> you know, I just was nodding my head the whole time. He gave a great line um, that I want to say, you know, because, you know, we, we joke about music at the gym sometimes. We get yeah. some feedback on that. Yeah. He goes, everyone thinks that their taste in music is good. And I'm like, that, it, that's like the simplest way to say it, but it's so true. But some people, like my taste in music, you might not like and vice versa. And he said, like, how do you get a room of 20 people, which we both coach classes of more than 20, more often than not. Mm -hmm. How do you get everyone in that room that thinks their music, taste of music is the best to listen to the same music in a workout and all be on the same page? So we really talked at length about what you should do with music in your gym. And 
you know, if you're listening to an hour of the same kind of music, that's a problem. Or if you're listening to your favorite music all the time, that's a problem. So, you know, those are some of the topics that we talked about. Then we talked about more serious things, logistics, warmups, uh, but programming came up. Mm-hmm. And I was really surprised when he said this. And this is really what we're going to talk about today. He said a few years ago, he got rid of RX and scaled at his gym. There was no RX. That's pretty aggressive. It's unless you were doing an open workout or Fran, like they're, they're, those are not your workouts. So right? I assume that they were doing their own programming, obviously. Yeah. Yep. So he's been programming. I think it's him. I don't, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure he's one that programs for the gym. And here's an example, 2159 deadlifts, hand cleans, burpees. That's today's workout, guys. That's it. 2159 deadlifts, hang, like there is no RX. You choose your weight. And in my, you know, control freak OCD, what I'm used to, what I feel like has worked at Bison, my initial thought was, no way is that a good idea. No way is that a, is that going to be a productive thing. Right. But it works. And he said since then, and he's honest about it. He goes like, it actually has really improved the general demeanor of the gym since we made that change because it got people. And we're going to go few uh, through a few pros and cons. I want to get your thoughts on all of them. Yeah. He goes, it got people away from pursuing things they should not be pursuing. And that was the biggest thing is like, you know, we, we talk about RX is it's a badge of honor for some, it's a goal for some. Mm-hmm. And why is it? And RX c- can be so subjective, mm-hmm. right? If we go to mayhem programming, what mm-hmm. we had at Waldwick that one week, it's really hard. Most of you guys can't do it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and does that mean you're bad? No, it just means the programming's hard, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I, I, it got my wheels spinning. There were a lot of topics I walked away from that meeting, like, you know, self-evaluate. Are we doing something wrong? Should we change something? This was one of them that in, in some ways I'm going to consider. Not all the way. I'm not going to go like no more RX for bison, no more, no more for scale. But I was thinking, you know, uh, we do have some days where we say choose weight, heavy deadlifts, heavy, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What is, what's your initial thought? If you went to a gym, Sam, you guys move to wherever. Yeah. And you're just joining as a member. Yeah. You go to the gym. There's never RX weights up there. What do you do? Well, at this point, I have enough experience that I feel like I could help myself, but it would throw me for a loop because I, I would have to think a lot more. Yeah. I would, you know, cause if they give, usually when they give a weight, then I can sort of scale off of that. Like that's too much. That's mm-hmm. not enough. And it, it also helps guide me in terms of the stimulus, like 21.15.9. I assume this is going to be a fast workout, so I need to move quickly. But how quickly? Like, you know, like... Un- unbroken or right. too so, so then I'm sitting... I would basically bug the coach a lot. Yeah. I'd be like, mm. what is my time, like, time cap? What should I be finishing this in? What, you know, uh, am I going to do the deadlifts and hand cleans at the same weight? Am I, uh, you know, going to have two barbells? I don't know. Some places might, um, what should the feeling be? You know, how much should, you know, is this a two minute, a four minute, a six minute workout? Mm -hmm. And all of that is just going to slow me down. Right. It's going to make it more inefficient. So my first reaction is I could do it but it's going to take me a lot longer before the workout to figure out what the hell I, I have to do. So, and I don't know this for a fact, but maybe his response would be, okay, so we write these workouts out and we, there's a description. And that would be the start of the solution if there was problems like you were just talking about. Would be, you know, we do like little blurbs for the programming here. Sometimes, you know, some people do say they help. So, but I could be much more detailed with those. I could write four paragraphs for a workout every single time. And I would do it if there was that much demand for it. But there would be demand. It would almost be vital slash necessary to have long write-ups so that, A, your coach isn't answering 23 questions per class that are just the same question over and over. But it also, part of, to me, of what a CrossFit membership includes, right? When you're a paying member is the programming. They take a lot of the thinking out for you, right? So they are telling you, you know, these are the ways that you should hit. And then we scale down from there. That's part of what you're paying for, the programming, the coaching, the, you know, the attention that you get, that it's not just show up to the gym, do your thing. When you do this, this is one of the cons to me that we'll eventually get to, but I I want to start off on the positive side. But to me, my initial thought was you're going to make it a lot harder for both the athlete and the coach. That was my initial response. Yeah. So, but I want to start off with the pros because I don't want to be negative here. (laughs) Okay. Um, The pros. Okay. Here's it. And let's just go one by one and 
talk about it. A less competitive feel. So I don't know if it would work for everyone, but I do think there are athletes both here and, and out there in, in, the, in the CrossFit world that do RX because they feel like they need to because they're an RX athlete. What is, what is a RX athlete? We can go down a different rabbit hole, a different time of what is a real RX athlete. But to me, it centers around the open. I, that's another reason. I always say the open is the barometer for what RX and scale should be. So if there's ring muscle-ups in the open, you got to put ring muscle-ups into your programming at your local affiliate. Uh, so, you know, if you can't do ring muscle-ups, you're a partial RX athlete because you can't do everything RX, right? So, you know, but does we see it in this gym all the time. People pursue RX just because literally they want RX written next to their name. A thousand percent. Okay. I'm so, guilty of that. Many times. Right. And I, you know, so, hey, I'm a 6 a.m. or today. I want people to see that I RX this workout at 7, at 9, 30, 11, 12, 1, 4, 15. Like, I want everyone to see it, right? And I want the people that I playfully or not playfully compete with. Hey, I did RX today. If you're going to beat me, you better do RX. If you want to compete with me, you better do RX. Not a great mindset, by the way, right? But, you know, there's egos involved and we all have them. And we're just speaking truth here from coaches that have experience. There are people that will RX because they want other people to see that they RX. Sometimes, and that's fine, but sometimes you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Yep. A snatch weight. I have a snatch workout. It's not soon, but it's coming up. 135 RX, six reps at a time. Ooh. There's going to be a lot of people that do that because they can do it once. Yep. No, but in my blurb, it's going to be like, this should be about 80% of your, your one rep max. Mm. So really, you should be able to snatch 165 plus if you're going to RX this workout. Mm. People are going to ignore that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to RX it because for that reason, they think they're RX athletes and they want other people to see it. What yep. do you think? Yeah, that, that could be me. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. could actually be me. I could yep. be sitting there because I could do 135, but it's like. Yeah. My, my one rep is probably like 155, 165. And I hate, and like. Honestly, I probably would tell you to do it, just so you know. Uh, I'm not just saying that because you're here, but this is where it's hard to have an objective rule. Like we give a guide on sh you should be able to snatch 165. That's I'm just trying to keep people safe, right? But you, Aaron, Adam Ramsden, you guys can all do it, and I think you guys are smart enough to know that hey, if I'm moving really poorly, I have to take a break. Mm -hmm. Other people don't have that awareness. Mm. We have a few new people in the gym right now that are coming into Bison, coming into CrossFit at a high fitness level. Mm -hmm. They can't CrossFit yet, mm -hmm. but they're fit. Yes. And there's ego involved. Yep. And they're going to be like, oh, dude, I could snatch 135 once. I'm like, all right, you're going to do it 35 times in the work or 36 times in the workout, you know, with other movements, mm -hmm. you know, and this is where they're going to see that 135 up there. And because they're competitive, mm -hmm. they're going to do it. Yeah. And they probably shouldn't. Yep. So that's where a pro of not having that 135 written up there, mm. you know, is it going to solve every issue? No, because those same people might look at the person next to them doing 135 and just say, hey, because he's doing it, I'm going to do 135 if there was no RX. I feel like a, in the programming, if you can set the RX well, like if you're a pro, if you have a really good programmer who can do that, right. it is super helpful. Yeah. I think if you have a programmer who can't do who can't really figure out a good RX weight for that gym, not just for in general, just mm. for your gym, then I could see where getting rid of RX and scaled might be a benefit. Right. But but someone who really knows, and I feel like that's what you do with your RX. Like, I'm always like, mm. Like, <laughs> it's, it's mm. to go either way. <laughs> mm. And I'm always like, and uh, and that that to me always shows me like, you know, that you really have a good sense and, and feel. And I know a lot of people at the gym feel the same way. It's always just like right there. And then, <laughs> and that's why I think when you do do RX or you can do it, like you can take a certain, I'm sorry, you do take a certain pride because you know, most of the times you're smart enough. You're like, I can't do that. But, but when you can, that it is, it does mean yeah. something. I want to make sure I, I want to reiterate something I've said before. Pride's not bad. Ego's not bad. Okay, so I want to make sure that they're, we're not putting a negative light on someone that's like, hey, it's my pride that's making me go RX. It's not a bad thing. You just got to be able to control it. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I have an ego. I have pride. I'll admit that. And But I feel like I have control of it. I know there are certain things I should not be trying to do, right? Like today's back squats, for example. Yeah. I really wanted to lift what other guys were lifting, yeah. but I didn't. You know, because I, I, you know, you have to have control of that pride because I'm just not ready to do that yet. I mean, about the less competitive feel. Yes, it's less competitive, yeah. but- 
sometimes you want that competitive feel. Absolutely. That's and, what CrossFit's found this time. Right. Really. And and so I there's no doubt when I do something RX, it means what my ultimate number that I put up on the whiteboard means more. Like if I know I, I can't do RX and I scale it, I mean, once I put that SC on there, I don't really care as much exactly. about my performance. I mean, I will still put a good performance in, Absolutely. but, but yeah. it's a little bit, it's not that extra gear that yeah. I might do if I have an RX there. So, you know, and, and Sam and I are both kind of performance centered. We do care about our performance. We care about our scores. We care about our weights, right? We also have to keep in mind that in my opinion, I don't know if you'll agree with this. I think the majority are just here for general fitness. Yeah, I it would just, say so. So if you're going to be making a macro level decision for your gym, should we have RX or scaled up there? The vocal people are going to be the performance centered, like, no, we need to have RX. We need to have scale. We need to record our scores, which also Cross at South Brooklyn does not do. Right? Oh, wow. Going to talk about that a little bit too. Ooh. Um, this is communist for God's <laughs> sakes. What the, what the hell? <laughs> and, you know, um, yeah, that's that's that we could probably fit that in here too. But most people are here just for fitness and health. They don't care about the RX. I really do, and I'm, I'm envious of that sometimes, um, or at least they say they don't care. And what no RX could do for those people, and eventually the people that are so obsessed with RX, is it makes them learn more about themselves. And to me, fitness and health is an everlasting learning growing process like you are always learning new things about health in general about yourself right it goes back to what we talked about at the start of the uh podcast that if you're a coach that's not trying to get better at coaching you should probably check out you know you should go somewhere else. like just stop coaching all right because it's such a service industry and you always have to be thinking about others and when you're thinking about others you want to get better at what you're doing right as a person, as an individual, if you stop trying to learn about your health and how to improve your life, like you're, you're going to go down such a steep hill as you get older and start losing that fight with biology. It's just going to snowball. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And this is why I love being around here sometimes. Like I just love being at the gym, whether I'm coaching or not, whether I'm working out or not. I like being around people that are so almost stressed about getting healthier and fitter and happier and all this stuff. So I think if you take RX, it does make someone break their workouts down more. You need some guidance from a coach, like that 2159 example we said. Hey guys, 2159, deadlift, hang clean, burpee. Your hang clean is probably gonna dictate today's weight, right? Because we don't want you to get to a point where you're doing two cleans at a time. So let's pursue a weight that in the entire workout, I said, you should always be able to do seven to nine reps at a time. No question. It's like, all right, cool. Seven to nine reps at a time. That can now, so, someone new, we have a new guy in the gym right now who's pretty fit. One of the guys I was just talking about, he, would, he still wouldn't know, right? That takes time. But you know what? A workout without RX up there is going to make him make a better decision. And that guide of seven to nine reps at a time is going to make him learn about, whether he's right or wrong today about that decision, it's going to make him learn about workouts down the road. I think you're right. Uh, I, I was thinking of it from two aspects. One is a longevity in CrossFit standpoint. Yeah. And longevity in CrossFit in some part is from avoiding injury and, you know, working every day, you know, with some less risk. And when you run, you know, when you read, you know, when you get close to that red line, you're always running a little bit more risk. That's mm -hmm. why the competitive athletes tend to have a fairly high risk because they're really training with such volume and intensity that, yeah. that, that you worry, they worry about that sort of thing. Right. And like you said, most people in our gym are here for everyday fitness to be over, overall fit. But, and I have seen this in CrossFit, the point of CrossFit, honestly, is to push yourself, mm -hmm. to learn what it's like to train at a pretty high level without necessarily going over. And that takes time to learn. Like I've burnt myself multiple times going over, you know, redlining and, and running that risk of injury. But overall, my fitness level would be so much better, is so much better because I know if, if after a while, if I didn't have more guidelines or, or goal to push to or something, and it was just me and I wasn't telling anyone and it wasn't being recorded, you know, I might do this at 95 for the rest of my life and right. be like, I'm getting a, a workout in. Yeah. Right. But when I really need that push, I mean, that's why we're in class, right? Right. Because we're around people. Yep. That's the community. You're, you're getting feedback from them and you're getting pushed from them. 
you you sort of take that aspect of it out when you drop that sort of um, aspect of it. I really do enjoy looking out of people's numbers, either being like, what? Like, for example, Sabrina hit 275 on her uh, three rep today, right? And just being like, whoa, yeah, like, yeah. and admiring that. Right, yeah. And and did, it, I, did I hear you say the line, it's like almost like watching a pitcher throw fast? Like yeah, that, yeah. Like, like that motion that she does yeah. is so yeah. um, professional right. on so many levels, right. you know? Like, and I told her like, the when she squats at 115 or when she squats at 275, it looks like it's a little slower at 275, sure. but the motion does not change. Yep. And DiCarlo has said that several times, like your air squat should look like your heaviest back squat. And that is true. Mm -hmm. Some some people execute it. She just executes uh, so, so well. Um, and so if I didn't see what Sabrina's number was and I didn't know what, what you know, then I would, it would be less of a rich experience for me in class. Yep, yep. I understand that. Yeah. So that, again, the numbers are important, right? And that's where RX scaled. It is important to have a number up there. Um, so we can get into some of the cons now, right? Because, okay. I, because my last one was going to be about reducing injury. Okay. And giving athletes ownership of themselves. And we okay. just talked about both those. So now the cons of no RX. So if we took away RX scaled, again, you just have words written on the board, no numbers, right? New people bad decision makers those are the going to people those are the ones that get they they get put at risk the most and i'm i sound like i'm contradicting myself and i'm making sure i'm not mm -hmm. where earlier i said people see rx and make their bad decision on that mm -hmm. yes that is the case i think it would be much more frequent to see other people look at a whiteboard look at a workout and pick their ways based on what others are doing in the room. Mm. Where if you have RX scaled written on the board, mm -hmm. right? Some still do listen to the talk at the whiteboard <laughs> about, hey, guys, make sure RX doesn't mean you're doing a good job. We're going after a certain stimulus of today's workout. So because our RX is this, and remember our RX workouts, our weights, our movements, our gymnastics, that is for that person, for that kind of workout, the best athletes in CrossFit Bison can RX this and get through it in a certain amount of time. Stimulus training. Okay. If you know you're not one of those, you know, that caliber of athlete with certain movements, sorry if that hurts your feelings. I'm just being honest, right? That you got to scale down from here, right? We've had this discussion before. Do you make RX easier and then make, me, make people go RX plus and, R, and scaled? And trust me, we've had plenty of discussions with our staff. We've had more than enough reflections on it myself. And I still come back to RX should be at the top and then you work your way down from there. Um, I don't think you should be going in two different directions with RX, up and down, RX plus and scaled, unless it's like a very specific reason or specific workout, okay? So well, this gives a decision maker who is not good at making decisions with their weights a guide of like, hey, I'm not there yet with that movement. I'm not someone that can crush wall balls and thrusters all day long. So I am one of the athletes that should be scaling from that number rather than just saying, hey, go pick your weight. And then you go look at what someone else is doing and you go from there. That's a bad decision. That was exactly what I was thinking is you are putting a way more decision-making power into the athlete when you don't give any guidance with it. Right. Which means either one, which we said this earlier, you're going to have people bugging the coach up, you know, from here, like for hours asking for yeah. more guidance. Yeah. Can you imagine? Or two, I know, it'd be ridiculous. <laughs> I, I mean, we already have a lot of questions yeah. from people with, and we're already giving a fair amount of guidance in terms of weights and numbers. Right. Um, and then the second thing is, like you said, the people who don't have experience or are not good decision makers are just going to um, go off of bad data or no data. And right. then the, and I could tell you if we did this at, at Bison, especially that first week or two, the number, like for example, 2159, that range of times yeah, would, would go from like two minutes to yeah. like 14, 15, 18, yeah. 18 minutes. Like we would have every range out there. Right. If you literally adhered to like, you have to choose your own weight. Right. And each class would run over by at least 15 minutes for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So now that gets into my next point, stimulus training. CrossFit is stimulus training. Nine times out of 10, there is a stimulus for the workout. That's why we put caps on workouts, right? That's why some people do RX plus, right? Um, that, hey, if I'm still hitting the stimulus with more weight, go for it. I'm not going to stop you, all right? And- 
it, let, let's say Fran didn't have a um, didn't have an RX. You know, Fran is twenty one fifty nine. 95, 65 is the barbell weight. 95 guys, 65 girls. If that workout did not exist, but we just, we still programmed it. 21, 59 thrusters, pull-ups. We had no RX written up there, but I wrote, you know, eight minute cap, nine minute cap. You would have people doing 95, 65, and they're not really understanding the fact that when you get tired on thrusters, like you are, you're screwed almost like to a failure point. You're going to have people do it in two, three minutes in this gym. And you're going to have people do 13, 14 minutes or they're going to get capped and you don't want to get capped in workouts. It happens. It happens to all of us. But usually when that happens, unless the workout says it's okay to get capped, we're losing the point of the workout. And I think there's a disconnect between a lot of CrossFitters and a program. There is a stimulus intent for every single workout that you need to try and hit. All right. That needs to be the goal for you to get the most out of the CrossFit program. All right. If one of the, your secondary goals is to be able to RX certain movements and weights, more power to you. I love that. I actually think that's important to want to RX. I think it's a great goal. I've said it before. If you want to RX everything we ever do, that's going to make you really pay attention to a lot of the little things. It's going to make you come on back squat day. Maybe not the most exciting thing in the world, but you got to get stronger if you want to RX everything. So you, you can't miss those days. It's not right. allowed. Right. Right. Um, what are your thoughts on just the, the idea of losing stimulus training if we take away RX skill? Uh, a thousand percent. I mean, when I do a workout and I know I have guidelines in terms of RX or scaled and I may scale it, I'm doing it. The problem is this, even as an athlete, even as a coach, I will do a workout and it will hit me in a way that was unexpected. How many times have we had athletes go, you know, I thought it was going to be like this, but woof, after that first round, yep. I felt my legs felt like lead coming off the box jumps into the thrusters or yeah. whatever it is. Right. You don't know what it's going to feel like. And so, you know, even if with experience, athletes are going to have issues in terms of determining stimulus and how it's going to feel. Mm -hmm. And the more information we can give them, the better off they're going to be. That's why I like doing these workouts if I can beforehand, mm. because it Good gives point. me that feeling of what that stimulus is. Like, what do I need? You know, what is that feeling like? I have a good feeling you will not be wanting to do next Thursday's squad by yourself. <laughs> oh, <holy shit. laughs> uh, oh my God. I am a, I'm, I'm going to tell you what it is after. And you'll, you'll, <laughs> All right. Good, good I, thing you're golfing on Sunday. I'm I, just going to say that. I just clenched a little bit right there. Um, <laughs> but I will say this. So, um, so anything that we can do to help people with that stimulus guide right. is better and less is not, I, in my mind personally, is not better. Right. Um, and the last thing I'll say about a con to taking away RX, I feel like the overall programming, you can easily lose continuity and consistency. You know, I mean, how many times have I, I, I asked for some comments last night that I, you know, we can talk, touch on about RX masters and scale, which is coming up in this episode. Okay. Uh, so I have about 15 minutes left here that, um, that the line of, Hey, bison program has gotten a lot harder over the past five years. Oh, it has. We talked about that. Yeah. And why do we think that? Is it because, you know, Dave just hates people and wants to crush them. <laughs> I'm sure I get some of that sometimes. The fitness level in our gym has gotten better from a macro perspective. It just has. There are people like, I'm not even going to bring up top 10, top 20 athletes. I'm not even going to go there. I'm just saying this gym can do much more weight, capacity work, and volume than they could have done five to six years ago. Is the gym bigger? Yes. Are people that have come from other gyms now come here? Yes. That th We've all kind of pointed that arrow up. Now, in people, some people's defense, they haven't gotten fitter. They're still just as fit as they were five years ago, but now they are scaling most things where they used to RX. And that can cause some, you know, some negative thoughts and I get that. And I am sensitive to it. I do try to program around that as well sometimes. Okay. But the, the consistency of this gym has been, as you guys get fitter, we're going to push the needle together as a group, whether you feel like you're involved in that or not, we're doing it as a group. Okay. If I, if we take out RX scaled, we no longer have that like togetherness in my opinion. It's harder for me too, by the way, right? My, my main program has always been Bison. And then I've had coaches and I've done some other stuff, right? I had like a year or two where I was chasing the competitions um, and I had a coach and I did everything he programmed for me. 
But Bison's still kind of been my foundation. It's harder for me too, by the way, right? And I've gone through like the used to be young, now I'm a master's athlete and things hurt more and it's harder for me, blah, 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 right? But we're all doing that together and it's consistent. That And if we do flatline at some point where we're getting to a point where people are, most of the gym's getting cats out of a workout or no one can RX the workouts, we, we, we pump the brakes a little bit. But it, it still offers a barometer for where we are as a gym fitness wise. And that, that's really my main kickback is you no longer have that barometer for your gym. What do you think? Yeah, uh, you and the gu general guidelines for RX programming is you're programming for the strongest or the most capable athlete in that workout. For that particular for workout. For that particular workout for the gym. And then, you, and then everyone else should be scaling off of that. And there's no doubt that we have stronger people at the gym, more fit people, more capable people, every workout, every movement, everything that we're doing. Yep. And, and so I have said multiple times, if you're a newbie and you come into the gym, it can be really Hell yeah. tough. Like yep. being a newbie five, seven, eight, ten 10 years ago, the weights were lighter. Like there were fewer movements. Like we have more different types of movements now too. We've incorporated so many different things. We never did dumbbell snatches mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Right. Like never. Um, so, um, but you have to, and honestly, I think, um, you know, we all personally take steps forward, steps back. Um, some things get better. Some things don't get as good. Uh, that's, that's part of the journey, I think. And to be able to see how the gym's RX is set again, that really depends on how good the programmer is right. like a program. Like that's why I've, I sometimes have issues with subscribing to other uh, companies programming like mayhem. Cause I will look at it and I'll be like, holy sh yeah. like who does like, for example, I, I was like thinking about this 21, 15, nine deadlift hand clean burpees. And I was like, I bet you ma'am would do like two Oh five or two twenty five or <laughs> yeah, something. Right. Yeah. Like two twenty five hand cleans. And I'd be like, that's stupid. Yeah. Right. But, like, I mean, maybe one or two, like not even, I don't know who would be able to really do that well here. Yeah. And then I was like, that's so, so, it, it is a guide and it is a guide for your gym. And so if you're taking someone else's RX off of a piece of paper, that's why the same thing with CrossFit, like cat programming, like the RX should be to your gym. Mm -hmm. And that is important. It is a guide for your gym. It's not a guide for the rest of the population or for the rest of the world. Um, you should really sc scale it or your number to your particular group of people. Yeah, I agree. So- I was hoping that we weren't going to touch on something because there's another point I have that never gets brought up in this discussion. We just talked about RX is scaled for half hour. We didn't bring up gymnastics once. Oh, other movements. Every time someone brings up RX scaled that we shouldn't be doing it, they're usually not a lifter. Right. Why? So if we need to scale weights up or down, why don't, this, why don't we scale gymnastics volume? Meaning, so for example, how would you do that for toes to bar or pull ups or something? Exactly. Like that? How do you do it? Because, like right now, 2159, deadlift, hand clean, burpee. You guys pick the weights. What if we said the workout was pull ups, box jumps, toes to bar, handstand push ups? Pick your volume. Wait, no, Dave, you need to tell us how many we're reps. Uh -huh. Well, we just want you to hit a stimulus. You know, something that's hard, but you can do unbroken, but you know, three rounds through and be consistent. People's, A, people's brains would be spinning. Be like, I have mm. no idea. You, can, you have to tell us how many to do. Okay, mm. cool. But how, because the illustration he gave, this guy Dave gave me that I laughed. A lot of us laughed when he said this. He goes, there's no way just because I have a penis, I should be doing 135 pound thrusters in a workout. I weigh 145 pounds, but because I'm a guy, I have to do that weight. This is like, that's stupid. I'm like, I get it. Do you say the same thing about pull-ups? Because I don't like, we have 225 pound guys here doing five muscle-ups in a row in a workout with handstand push-ups and burpees and jump rope. Like that they're doing more work than the person that weighs 150 pounds. So if we're going to scale weights because you're small, we should be scaling volume for gymnastics because they're big. I see. So RX pull-ups would be 10, but. But if you weigh above this, you should be doing five. Eight, five. <laughs> But like, or it's like, how about this? If you want to keep it to pull-ups, um, hey guys, pull-ups, but hey, if you're a little bit lighter, maybe you do chest to bar, you know, or you do strict, you know, this is why you open up a can of worms if you don't have RX. Mm. And 
in my opinion, not having RX simply just makes it easier for the programmer. Makes it harder for the coach, by the way. Yeah. Because we just said you would get littered with questions. Yep. But it's just funny. And I don't have an answer. It's just funny to me. And I'm not being negative either. It's just we never bring up the body weight stuff. And the most of CrossFit programming is body weight. Mm -hmm. So why, how come that never comes up? Like if we, or if we did right, 2159, handstand push-ups, toes to bar, box jumps. Um, you choose what kind of handstand push-up. So if I'm awesome at them, maybe I'll do deficit. If I'm awesome in pull-ups, maybe I'll do them all strict. So maybe that's your answer to it. But you never see that. You almost never see that. Like I know a guy like Hovig, he does pretty much strict pull-ups every time we come here. Mm -hmm. You do that a lot too. You cut the yeah. reps in half, you go strict, yeah. right? Yep. Kyle Rader will do that sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, and, and that's fine. You guys will scale that and you kind of take that on yourself. I think that's more for like safety issues and mm -hmm. shoulder issues, right? Mm -hmm. But you never hear that in, in a gym. It's always about the weights are too heavy, but you almost never say, hey, I'm a bigger. I should be only doing, you know, I should be able to do handstand pushups to an ad mat rather than all the way to down. That's so interesting. I don't know why. And uh, I mean, I think it's just from a simplicity standpoint. Right. Because, simplicity for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, body weight movements, everyone is at a different body weight. So it gets super complicated. Yep. I mean, we've talked about this before. Should we have weight classes for CrossFit? Yep. And, that came up last night. Yep. Yeah. And all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, th this is always a compromise. All of these are compromises that are being made. And honestly, corporate CrossFit has worked out a lot of this stuff. And you, you see how they sort of do their programming, especially for competitive athletes, what they do. And we sort of go along with it because there's, there is an efficiency that's associated with RX scaled that you would not have. Would there be advantages not to do RX scaled? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the efficiency of getting people better, it's so tremendously inefficient. Mm. So we'll wrap this up. We got about 10 minutes left. We're going to come circle this conversation to, should there be RX and scaled? And we just gave you our thoughts on it. Again, we lean towards there should always be RX, but it's okay if you don't. We're going to bring back up the topic that Sam and I have debated a few times, and it's should there be RX and scaled for masters? And instead of us just giving our opinions back and forth, which I'm sure we'll get to, I, I put it on my Instagram last night that if you have any thoughts on that, I'll keep you anonymous, right? But I do want to hear, what do you guys think about RX and scaled for mass? or sorry, RX for masters? And what, well, what I'm essentially asking is, is there an age number in which we should just naturally start bumping down RX weights and volume, all right, for a lot of the movements, for anyone above X amount of age. The most common number I got was once you hit 40, we should start scaling. I've said 45 in the past is when I would start scaling. The CrossFit games, they start at 55. So if you're 54, you're doing the same workout as a 21-year-old. And um, don't agree with that. But it's okay because, again, if you're competing and you're only competing against people in your age group, it really doesn't matter. So, But we're th really talking about how can we blend this into our fitness programming at the gym. And I've tied this conversation with so many people, and it's one of the most polarizing topics that I talk to about people in the gym because people are passionately on both sides of the argument. Sam leans more toward there should not be masters for RX. Short, in a short summary, why is that? Because you're stigmatizing the masters. Okay. If you uh, write down an M or something right. next to my name, then it's just a reminder to me and everyone else, <laughs> you're, you're effing old. <laughs> like, it's like a scarlet M that you're writing on my score. That's fair. And That's fair. And you know what? Like, I don't like, I, I never think about, I, I try not to think about my age, not because I'm ashamed of it. Right. I'm 53 years old. Yeah. And you're I'm, doing amazing. You're, I'm, I'm, yeah. Whatever. Like, right. I, I never want to use whatever my age is as an excuse for not performing. Okay. Like, whatever, whatever level to which I can perform, I can perform. Now, do, is age a factor? Absolutely. But you know what? No one's writing five foot four on my score either. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that like, or my weight, like next to my score. So these are all just points of data about me. They're, you know, yeah. Yes. I'm five foot four. Or, I don't know. I want to say five foot five. I'm a hundred. I, I say five ten. So <laughs> I'm 168 pounds yep. and I'm 53 years old. So why the F do you have to write one of those things down <laughs> when all of those things do actually affect my, my performance? Yeah. My height so does, my weight does, and my age does. Sam's body fat is probably under 10%. So, it, so <laughs> yeah, you could write that one down. So like, what, yeah. yeah, like 
pick and choose what you want to write on the board. <laughs> right. I don't want you to talk about my age, but you talk about my body fat. <laughs> right. Other people are like, I don't want you to talk about my body fat, but you could say I'm 28, you right. know, like, or I'm 21. Right. And again, now you're just like, hey, coach, write down all these life details about me. Um, definitely a fair point. Now, I don't want to be reminded that I'm X age. I'm looking at someone's response, or again, anonymous. Um, also, again, just personal and not sure my opinion even matters since I have no science backing it. Very fair point. But I've heard this multiple times. This came up at the Henshaw seminar. But generally speaking, with friends and family, I feel like at age 40 is a noticeable change for many people physically. It could be very, very minor and people might not even notice. But whenever I hear someone that usually their, their ailments start acting up more and more, it's usually like right around 40. So my point of putting a Masters RX up there would be to kind of coincide with the fact what's it is naturally happening to you. We do lose lean muscle mass starting at the age of 35, guys. It happens, you know, unless you're taking a PED. Um, you know, I'm not a woman. I'm not going to go down the path of, of knowing what they go through. But I know at some point, you know, like menopause comes in and like they, you know, they're going to come in and still CrossFit and they have to start changing things. And we're actually helping that process out, especially if you are mentally attached to an RX. We are literally telling you, you're still RX. You're still doing this prescribed. And we understand you're old. You know, I see your age every time you start for the open. Like I could go find your age if I want to. And maybe we should try to fight this stigma of getting older is, is bad. You know, I always give so much respect to people like you that you're still doing this at that age. Like look around you, dude. Like you're a superhero. Like no one's doing that your age. Nobody except the CrossFitter. You know, and it's like, I almost want to say it's a badge of honor that, that that you're a master's athlete and you're still doing this stuff. And it's almost in a way to protect you. I think there, that's where a disconnect is between you and I with this stuff. It has not like I, and I understand why. And this is why all of my responses that I got from athletes, most of them were, nah, most of them from coaches, every coach that messaged me said, yes there should be a master. And it's really because you're trying to protect people from themselves. What do you think? I know how to scale. Yeah. Does everyone though at mm. your age? You're very in tune with CrossFit. You should. Yeah. I, I mean, I think we should push people to learn how to scale. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's an ego thing. I know it is. The people that I know who are good athletes, who are masters, feel like they're not being recognized enough for their accomplishments yep. at age 55, at age 60. Like, right. You know, I, I'm killing it. I'm. You're right. I'm killing it for my age. I am a superhero in my group, like for my pop in the population. And yet, I come to the gym and on the whiteboard it, it says scaled and blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it. So I love it when I can actually get recognition that I'm killing it and I'm 60 right. and I'm doing so well. Well, you know what? I understand that. Mm -hmm. But there are opportunities that we have where you can shine. Right. The open competitions. Yep. Other, you know, like they have categories for, for people who are Absolutely, yeah. at your age. So why do you need that recognition every day at the gym that you're doing it so well? Like, it, come on. Right. It could be that it's training you for those tests. Right. And like, you have to ask yourself, is it the ego that's making that decision? Like I'm looking at another athlete that said, my ego would say no, but more and more my body and my wad scores say otherwise. Based off how I feel and what I noticed in my own performance over the years, I think 40 to 45 should be a slight step down from open RX, uh, basically up to age 35. That's what he means. Um, and then every five years, you kind of just scale it down another two to 5%, whatever. He didn't say that, but. So what at age should you start the master's RX if you're going to do this? My anecdotal opinion would be 45. And then every 10 years, so like at 45, essentially things go down by 10%. Mm. And then at age 55, it goes down another 10%. Mm. Um, and that's about where it would end up naturally. But what I don't always know is, <laughs> this is more of a logistic programming thing. Mm. 2159, pull-ups, thrusters. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we're changing the volume too? Yeah. 18, So it's going to be 18 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 12 and right. like you lose kind of the flow, right? I mean, part of these rest schemes are math based. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I want people to do X amount of volume, yeah. but it's also easier to keep track of. Yeah. Like your rest scheme is going to be harder to keep track of. It's 18, 14, nine. Right. So, wait, what? Right. 18, 14, eight. Right. Um, so again, you're just opening up a can of worms and you're making things complicated. Um, so I, I think something should be scaled for most athletes starting at 45. Yeah. And then down to 55 again. Yeah. But not everything. 
Yeah. And the way I've kind of settled on this at Bison was that we do it every now and then. But the issue, and it's not really an issue because again, you, Kat, Tracy, you're all, you're all the, you guys are adults and you guys know yourselves very well. Yeah. And there's usually a reason why you wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. That's very justifiable is, you know, the fact that you guys didn't do it, you know? So it's now it's, so this is what, like, I remember talking to the coaches about this, right? Here's RX. Here's RX masters, 50 plus or 45 plus. You did regular RX. I think Kat did too. So now I'm like, wait, is that RX plus? Or mm -hmm. my thought was, no, I'm going to write Sam and Kat did RX. If you did the masters RX, you're up there as RX. Mm -hmm. So someone who doesn't know you or comes mm -hmm. at night, they're just looking at you as RX. Mm -hmm. If they don't know your, your age, mm -hmm. they're going to be looking at you and saying, all right, wait, did Sam do vice like open RX or masters RX? Mm -hmm. And it gets complicated. And it's like all these topics. Is it causing too much confusion? And does it circle back to what this podcast started off as? Mm -hmm. You need to be able to make your own decisions. You know, here's our guide, but you should be able to make your own decision. And we just screw this whole thing. It's an interesting discussion. Everyone that you know of, especially on the coaching side, is on the other side of this equation where they're not masters. Right. It's just me. Right. Like I'm the only one who's over 50. You are. You're true. So yeah. I, all I say is, and okay, you, you can have your perspective, but wait till you get to the other side of things. And then you tell me whether you want that MRX next to your name. Absolutely. And tell me how you feel. About so it. I wouldn't put MRX. That's the thing. I yeah. would just put RX. Mm, you know? That's <laughs> bullshit. No, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> because. No. And here's the thing. That's why it causes confusion. I would just, I would never write MRX. I would just write RX. Because Bull, you're no <laughs> fault. No, nope. but then mm -mm. we would have because I know you, I wouldn't know what you did. If I looked at your score and I wasn't there and I just saw RX next to your name, my question would be like, was it Masters RX or That's regular? Fake. That's fake. Is it? Total. But in the open, if you go into it doesn't have MRX next to you at 55 plus. No, but they know what division I'm in. I'm in the 50 to 54 age group. Some people do. No, they know. I guess when you filter the leaderboard, you would say that you're Absolutely. in the 55 plus. And, yeah. and also when you get a quarterfinals, everyone knows it's like the mat, like, you know, we don't, we don't, we have only a very few number of people who are individual, like 18 to 34 who right. get in. Right. Most of us are masters at right. that point. That's true. So they all know. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And again, is that what we make the decision on? Like what other people know, what other people think? Yes. You know, we, we do to a point. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so the, and, and again, I'm trying to, wrap this up because I would love to keep this conversation going, but we do have a deadline that we have to adhere to in the next five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I still want to keep this dialogue going and I didn't get to everyone's comment that, that messaged back, but I do want people to think about this more and more. And I don't only want to make it about Sam and I and our master's athletes endeavors, you know, this applies. The reason I brought this master stuff up, it is the same exact conversation as RX scaled in general. Yes. It's based on ego. It's based on pushing your threshold. It's based on doing things together and not feeling ostracized because you're older or scaled mm -hmm. or, or RX, mm -hmm. right? Does RX and scaled do more damage than good? Damage is ego, giving fake goals, making things, uh, making people think things that are not really true, right? If you're an RX athlete at a gym that just started off, and you think you're a monster because you can RX everything, then you come to a gym like this, you know, you get hit hard with truth that you're not, right? Um, and then, but it's also there to help us out. You know, there's good and bad to this stuff, right? It's, it's, and there's a huge mutual responsibility between athletes and coaches and programmers to try to get it perfect, even though you're never gonna get it perfect. You're always striving for that. And that's why I brought up the master stuff. It's, it's the same exact discussion. Good point. So, so I do think you guys, everyone listening today, thanks for listening. I want you to just put some more thought into what really is RX to you? What is scaled? I'm sure we'll talk about this in another light. Maybe we can get up a third person up here. Mm. Um, this would be a, a fun topic to talk about with a third, uh, another guest. Um, I have a few people in my head right now that think it would be really good to talk to about this mm -hmm. because they go back and forth themselves on it. Mm -hmm. And I think a good, healthy discussion on any debatable topic is you hear both sides and you respect both sides. So that, that was fun to do. Awesome. All right, cool guys. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day to listen to the Herd Fit Podcast. Be on the lookout for next week's episode.